My name's Tony Whitbread, I'm the Chief Executive of the Sussex Wildlife Trust. I've actually been Chief Executive there for about 10 years or so. But I've been working with the Sussex Wildlife Trust for about 27 years, something like that. And before that I worked for, the, for what was then the Nature Conservancy Council, now Natural England. And I was lucky enough to be able to do all sorts of work with ancient woodland. I did ancient woodland in inventory work, I did survey work, research work. And I was lucky enough to be there when there were some really good woodland ecologists, you know, great mentors of mine really. So I was able to learn a lot from, from some of the best in the country. It's about 18% of Sussex's woodland, about half of that is ancient. You can go into these woods and you can read them in different sorts of ways. You can read their landscape, you can read the species that are here, you can understand the ecology and the geology. You can look at the banks and ditches and you can read their history. So ancient woodlands are not just a kind of place with some trees on them, they're actually a history book as well as being of great wildlife interest. So you've probably got a hedgerow here that's many hundreds of years old. And these are important because they actually link up habitats. So you might have, a, you, you have got such a rich wooded area here. Um, you know, so much of the woodland here is ancient and interconnected, but it's interconnected by these very old hedgerows. So a lot of the, a lot of the animals uh, that use this area can track along the hedgerows and that's how they get between the area. So actually, if you're a bat, then this area, this is more like a forest with holes in it rather than a, a landscape of woods. So it's, um, it's essentially a woodland matrix. And that's why the Weald of Sussex is so valuable. It's because it's a matrix of forest habitats. And that interconnectivity is so important. If we take one example, the Barberstell bat, uh, they use the entire landscape. And if you break up that landscape, you lose those bats. There's a species here which really confirms that this is ancient woodland. And actually you get this in a lot of ancient woodlands, but it's very, very slow to colonise, so where you find it, you're pretty sure that you're in ancient wood. And that's this one, which is a wild service tree. A uh, leaf a little bit like a sycamore, I suppose, but it's more closely related to, to rowan and whitebeam, it's a sorbus. So it's nice to be able to come into a wood and, and see this sort of thing more or less straight away. You've got a mixture of, well, lots of, lots of hazel, but also maple uh, and oak trees, of course. Um, and it's just a nice general mixture uh, with multiple layers, all supporting different wildlife. But it's actually the volume of this in the whole area that's so important. Uh, as we have such a lot of woodland, it means we can support all sorts of woodland, uh, woodland species that you simply wouldn't get if you had the isolated occasional patch. Think of fairly common things like nut hatches. Uh, they're around in Sussex, they're actually quite common, but you wouldn't get them if you started to lose the woodlands. Other things that are rarer, like greater spotted woodpeckers, we see them all the time, but you wouldn't get that if you started to nibble away at the trees. Some things that are already getting quite rare, even in Sussex, lesser spotted woodpeckers, marsh tits and willow tits, they are starting to disappear. We're now looking out across a kind of matrix you know, small-scale landscape. What's, what's interesting here, and again, it reflects a lot of what you find in Sussex, are these belts of woodlands, belts of trees. They show up on the map as just hedgerows, but in fact, when you get here, they are what the Sussex people called shores. They're thin belts of trees. And these are what are so important. They can themselves be ancient, but they're, what's actually, they're what links up the landscape, so it acts as one big interconnected forest. And that's what you, it's difficult to get across, is that, um, yes, you can nibble a hole in it here and there, and it doesn't sound like much of a loss, you know, the odd half an acre here, half an acre acre there but you're breaking up a matrix it's like breaking up a jigsaw by losing one or two of the pieces you know you, you lose the picture fairly quickly it's, it's very sad from my perspective that we see um, development first of all here but actually you have to bear in mind threatened across the whole of the world you've got a multiplicity of development sites you've got huge problems when it comes to moving equipment on the Sussex roads which are small um, you've got problems when it comes to where does the water come from where does it go to how does it get treated there may be answers individually to each of these problems, but added up as a huge issue, multiplicity of sites over a large area, and you're starting to see a real threat to our landscape. 